This video explores how to find the distance between two points on the number plane. When we're asked to find the distance between two points on the number plane, we use the following formula. Distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's see how that works. When we're asked to find, for example, the distance between the point minus 3, 5 and the point 1, 2, we use the coordinates of those two points to, uh, to substitute into the distance formula and find the distance between those two points. Let's see how. We'll call the first point point 1 and the second point, logically, we'll call point 2 and then we'll just label each of the parts of those points. Now the first value in each ordered pair is an x value. So an x value in point 1 we'll call x1. So that's the x of point 1 we'll call that. And the second value in each ordered pair is a y value. So we'll call that second value there, that 5, the y of point 1. Now they've got these subtexts here, so that's x1 or x of point 1, y1, x of, uh, sorry, y of point 1. And on the other one we'll label as well, we've got x of point 2 and the y value of point 2. That's pretty important because the distance formula above uh, has those sort of uh, namings in it. So let's put all the right uh, numbers in the right spots now. Let's fill in this distance formula. Okay, we're looking for x of point 2, and you see from the arrow that is a 1 there. It goes up in its right spot there. And we're looking for now to subtract the x of point 1. And we have to be particularly careful here. There's a subtraction in the formula, and x1 happens to be a negative number. We've got to put both of those in there, and we'll carefully combine them in a moment. Then we're looking to substitute in a y value from point 2 and it's good that we've labeled them down the bottom here because that helps us uh, not have to look too hard to find that. So a 2 will go in there and we need to subtract y of point 1 which is that 5 there. Okay, we'll put all the right values in the right spots by reading them off. It did help a lot that we had already labeled these points down here so that uh, that helps a lot. If you label them first, you don't have to keep looking around for the right number so hard. All right, let's process that. Now, two minuses together, you see in this bracket here, they combine to be a plus. You could type that into your calculator, but uh, it combines to be a plus. And so we'll have the square root of 4 squared when we simplify that bracket of 1 minus minus 3. Turns out to be a 4. Then we'll uh, combine that 2 and that minus 5 carefully on the number line or in our calculator to get minus 3 squared. Now we'll have 16, 4 squared is 16, 4 times 4. Now minus 3 squared, anytime you square a negative number turns into a positive because we actually are multiplying minus 3 times itself or minus 3 times minus 3. So we'll have plus 9 there. And we'll simplify that further. 9 plus 16 is uh, 25. Square root of 25. 25 is a nice square number there, so we can get a, a final nice round number, whole number answer of 5 units. So we've found the distance between those two points. The, di the point 1 was minus 3, 5. Point 2 was 1, 2. And we've uh, substituted all those values, the x and y values, carefully into the right spots in the uh, distance formula and we've processed them carefully, watching out for negatives and those sorts of things. So if we do that carefully step by step, we can get an answer of five units there. That's a whole number answer. Now we don't always get uh, whole number answers, but still. Now just on just to show you, those two points were minus three, five and one, two, and we've found the distance between those two points as five units. Now that distance formula, if you stare carefully at it, it's got a lot of the elements of Pythagoras. So down here, we'd have a one side of three units and we'd have to go across four units there and if you process that uh, Pythagoras uh, situation here you will get five on that side there too. So the distance formula is based on Pythagoras. 
Okay, then there's a couple of variations of that. We just I just showed you a nice, uh, easy, well, no, straightforward example on uh, how to find the distance between two points, and we've got a whole number answer. We don't always get that, so here's a question that asks us to find the exact distance between two points. Now, I won't, uh, we won't go through every uh, part of the working again. I'll cut to the chase and show you the answer, actually, or near the answer. The distance is actually square root of 73 if you process those values into the distance formula. And I'm going to leave that in third form because that word exact means that we don't use our calculator and get some sort of a decimal here. An exact distance is left in third form. So we'll resist the temptation to put that into our calculator and get a, a sim more simple answer um, because they want it to be exact. We won't, don't want to round off a decimal there. Another variation is uh, they can also use those same values and get uh, square root of 73 for our answer. But if they indicate they want it correct to two decimal places, that really is a strong indication that they want you to put that into your calculator and get a, an, an answer for it, a decimal answer for it, and to round that off carefully. So if you round that off carefully, square root of 73 on your calculator will end up giving you 8.54 units if you round it off to two decimal places. So sometimes we get whole numbers just because uh, our answer is a square number when we square root it. Uh, sometimes we're asked for exact distances where we'll leave them in third form and sometimes we're asked for certain numbers of decimal places. So we'll put that square root version just before the final answer into our calculator and get a decimal and round it off carefully. So there's a few variations of the types of questions you can get when you're asked to find the distance between two points. Alright, hope that helps and for all your maths needs, peterblakemaths.com is the place to go. See you next time.